Yes, Stefano. Yes, thank you. Thank so you. Much, dear Chancellor, dear Monsignor Marcelo Sanchez Orondo, and dear President Stefano Samagni, and thank you so much, everyone, for giving me this opportunity of learning in a deeper way about the Fratelli Tutti letter and encyclica. I name my presentation from political slavery to social friendship. Pope Francis teaches us in Fratelli Tutti that when political action does not work for a common project, it is reduced to marketing recipes aimed at the destruction of an enemy. Without real, generous, inclusive, and transformative political action, new forms of slavery gain ground, poverty, exclusion, lack of access to education and job opportunities. Market freedom, when reduced to freedom to produce and consume as proposed by neoliberalism, does not guarantee human freedom or social peace. Just as economic relations can move from voluntary exchange to oppression, political practice is damaged by new forms of slavery that are expressed mainly in five aspects as follow. Firstly, the slavery of polarization. Modern democracies are at risk due to the lack of dialogue at the absence of institutional mechanisms for the resolution of conflicts. Confrontation is exacerbated and society becomes polarized, taking one side or the other as if there were nothing but emptiness in the middle. We become prisoners of a destructive dialectic where our own ontological existence becomes meaningful only in opposition. The media fame enhances polarization through the exaltation of frivolity or the pauperization of the debate. And the wrong use of social networks, when they are not used for bringing together what is distant, also favor individualism, polarization, and exhibition of personal narcissism. Secondly, the slavery of oppressive financial networks. Financial mechanisms typical of a technocracy prevent the economy from being enlightened by other values. The financialization of the global economy offers a fictitious growth and ephemeral profitability for the great majorities based on the eternity of development countries on speculation on short-term exploitation. When politics is a slave of these financial networks, it loses its liberating purpose and becomes just another tool to discipline the social discontent that inevitably follows deception. Thirdly, the slavery of different forms of corruption. No development is possible with corruption. There can be no equity when there is a submission of the public good to the interests of mafias and corporations. Organized crime, human trafficking, money laundering, the use of tax havens. All serious crimes are twice as serious when they coexist with politics, spreading the virus of resignation. Fourthly, the slavery of regressive treatment of the environment. Latin America's GDP per capita could fall by up to 30% by the end of the century if the average temperature rises by 3 degrees Celsius. The region is also the most affected in terms of fatalities from natural disasters, accounting for 22 for, for I'm sorry, 52% of total cases between 2009 and 2018. Hunger and death is the inevitable result of an environment policies that is predatory of natural resources. Lastly, the slavery of the technological model and aware of labor inclusion and social justice. New technologies, just as artificial intelligence, 
can be a source of great improvements and well-being, but they can also be a source of social injustice, a technological social injustice, if their use is not followed by a sense of ethics, of protecting human beings, always fragile, from the abusive, powerful machines. Passivity is not neutral. Inaction leaves us subordinated to a technological model of pure efficiency and extreme pragmatism, where people are eclipsed by clouds of data, algorithms, and economic results. As if they were chains, these five aspects enslave political practice and give us a monochromatic version of its true power for change reality. These five expressions of political slavery represent a new form of fake, of fake democracy trafficking that kidnap and kill both human beings and institutions. In order not to, help, to fall into hopelessness, it is essential to find the keys, the ways out of each of these five enslaving aspects. We need to go beyond the diagnostic, diagnostic phase and move forward with concrete liberating actions against the political captors. To do so, we rely on at least five aspects of friendships. Firstly, friendship as social dialogue. The slaving polarization requires states to create meeting places, to organize agreements and to accompany decisions. This is what we are promoting in Argentina with the Economics and Social Council, made up of workers, scientists, businessmen, and representatives of civil society, which in trust of the president of the nation, I have the honor to decide. We have selected 25 essential topics of the public agenda in the areas of health, institutional quality, productivity with social cohesion, integral ecology, education, and labor. The aim is not to obtain spurious validations, but to design state policies that have the strength of consensus and show an alternative path to, polar to polarization. Viral hate in social networks cannot take primacy over a defined words and common projects. Secondly, friendship expressed in solidarity finance. To escape financial oppression, we have a great opportunity in the G20 and international organizations, where the consensus to act in solidarity in the face of external debts is rising. During the Jubilee 2000, St. John Paul II highlighted the need for debt relief of the poor countries to be complemented by investments in education and health. Today, there are also initiatives that we, that we should support, such as the intention to link debt relief to greater commitments in the fight against climate change. There is a need to consider new instruments of inclusion, such as the universal citizen income, and to link it to education in the hard and soft skills required for the shops of the future. Also rethink the teaching of the next generation of economists in order to include ethical and social aspects in decision making. Thirdly, friendship as a sincere and transparent relationship. The remedy to slavery expressed by corruption comes in large doses of transparency. New technologies, open platforms, and big data can help illuminate ever controversial aspects of political campaign finance, public procurement, and state investment in infrastructure. As Pope Francis emphasized, politics like finance should not be a parasitic intermediation but the path of service to the common good. Corruption is like the tango. To dance it, you need to politicians and businessmen. The first step to banish it should always be the transparent election of judges. 
without credible and reliable justice, politics get lots in labyrinth of obscure civil courts. Fourthly, friendship in an integral ecology. Proper care for the environment will only be possible through major global agreements, such as the Paris Agreement. We must advance in a transition towards clean energies and to promote the creation of green shops linked to recycling, reforestation, and implementation of a blue development agenda for the seas. Our priority mission should be an integral ecology for the care of the environment and people. We must take precautions so that the post-pandemic growth is a green growth that represents a new intergenerational pact of respect and solidarity. Lastly, friendship reflected in innovation for inclusion. A digital Bretton Woods can establish a global framework for the use of 4.0 technologies. It must focus their use on the common good to turn data into useful information to build social policies to promote education, women's empowerment, and jobs of the future. Artificial Three intelligence minutes. cannot coexist Three with minutes. artificial ethics. It is essential to pay special attention to antitrust, market competition, and privacy protection mechanisms. Technology for the common good includes innovation for the fight against hunger, adding value for, to primary production, and increasing the productivity of family farming. A regenerative circular economy restoring employment and integral development needs a regenerative policy of value, values, fraternity, friendship, and solidarity. Pluralism is the protective yield against ideological sectarianism. To finish, multilateralism is key to start down the road to making real difference on three urgent levels. Let me, mention, let me mention for finishing three specific steps that could be taken at the global level in order to overcome the globalization of indifference. Firstly, within the framework of the World Trade Organization, support the initiative promoted by, by India and South Africa to suspend intellectual property rights on any technology, drug, or vaccine against COVID. This is a clear case where the right to property must be subordinated to the right to life. Secondly, to move quickly with the issuance of special drawing rights, SDRs, by the International Monetary Fund. These injections of liquidity will mean substantial relief of the, for the countries hardest hit by the health crisis in a necessary globalization of solidarity. Thirdly, and lastly, the, should, the G20 should restart the offensive launch in 2008 crisis against the tax havens that hold nearly a third of global private wealth and generate harmful fiscal effects on public resources. Thank you. Pope Francis remind us that there is a need for peacemakers, men and women prepared to work, work boldly and creatively to initiate process of healing and renew encounter. Let's, let us be bold on building bridges for dialogue. Let's, let us be creative in imagining the potential of a politics free of its toxic ties in order to create a common project. Thank, Thank you. So you. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Thank you.